And today's question is all yours, Scott. What is it? Can the Browns tight ends perform at the level they need to in Kevin Stefanski's offense? Now, of course, we're not talking so much about receiving because both Austin Hooper and Dave Njoku have proven that they're pretty good at catching the ball. Uh, this really has mostly to do with how they're going to be as blockers. Uh, we know all about David Njoku's issues uh, as a blocker. You know, John Dorsey kind of called him out, what was it, two years ago at the uh, NFL Combine saying he's got to get better. And then, you know, David Njoku ended up having what was pretty much a lost season last year. And he, uh, when he was on the field, he hadn't really improved as a blocker. Um, so you're not really sure what you're going to get from him there. Uh, Austin Hooper has been okay. He's been a little better than, than David Njoku as a blocker if you just want to go by PFF grades. Um, not one of the elite run blockers in the league by any means. But you basically have two tight ends who – are better known for catching. I think one of the things they'll have to do is, of course, those guys are going to have to step up their, their blocking efforts. They're going to have to prove they can do it. Uh, and, and I'm sure that, uh, that there will be a heavy emphasis on that. But I think one way you can make up for some of those deficiencies is to make sure that there's a lot of global blocking going on. First of all, they've got a really good offensive line, and that will help them a lot. Uh, so those guys, you know, they might not have to chip as much as they normally would you know they might be able to to you know be out on a route instead of staying in and helping you know Jack Conklin or Jedrick Wills block um, so I think that's one thing I think the line will be better and that will take the focus off that uh, but what I mean again by more global blocking is you know the receivers are going to have to block more you know, obviously the running backs are going to have to do their share of, of blocking. So, I mean, if everybody pitches in, uh, I think it can, can kind of make up for some of those deficiencies if, if they're there. I, I think kind of the big, the, the place we have to start is David Njoku. I think we, we kind of know what Austin Hooper can do. And, and this, this goes beyond the, the blocking part of it. We know what Austin Hooper can do. Uh, we've seen it in Atlanta. But David Njoku is a guy who's kind of got second life here. I think had John Dorsey still been the GM, had Freddie Kitchen still been the head coach, I, I, I doubt that David Njoku's fifth-year option would have gotten picked up. Now, I don't even know if he would still be here. Uh, they probably would have shopped him and, and tried to move him. I, I don't know for sure, but it just felt like it was going that way. He was very clearly in the doghouse last year. And a big part of it is, you know, he, of course he got hurt, but – he really just hasn't been a super reliable target outside of the red zone. Now in the red zone, it seems like he's been a good target for this team. You know, he always seems to be able to make those acrobatic catches. Sometimes it's the easy ones, uh, but his hands were an issue last year. And we, we'd go and watch practice and they'd run routes against air and, and we'd see footballs hit the ground uh, with, with him. So that's really, I think where this starts because you feel good about Austin Hooper, but David Njoku has got to, to kind of take that step now. The other guy, of course, to mention in this is the Browns did use their first pick on day three of the draft on a tight end. You know, not, not the sixth round, not the seventh round. They used a fourth round pick on Harrison Bryant out of FAU, sort of opposite David Njoku. This is sort of a production pick. This is a guy that produced big time numbers in college and, and won the Mackey Award. Uh, I, I thought that was interesting. I, I was kind of convinced going into the draft, as I said on this podcast, that they were going to take a tight end. I just felt like in this offense, adding more tight ends was important. And they, they end up using their very first pick on day three uh, to add a guy like Bryant. We'll, we'll see what he can do at the NFL level. But there, there is a lot of potential there, and there's a lot of production from the college level from him. 